Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. I would like to again welcome every one of you on behalf of Seed Business School. My name is Andras Karpati, and uh, together with Balaj, we will be your host today. Uh, this is already our fourth event in our webinar series. And as you probably already know uh, by now, we are doing these sessions on every Thursday at 4 p.m. until the end of June. You may please check out our website and uh, can already register for all of the events. Um, and as usual, before we start, I would like to give you some technical information about today's session. Um, as you have experienced, you have, I have muted all of you, and I also would ask you to uh, turn off your um, cameras during the session. Um, during the, the webinar session, you will be free to ask any questions via the chat icon, and there will also be um, uh, a slide where we will ask your opinion via chat. Uh, we will remind you then. Um, the chat icon is at the bottom of the screen, and please also let us know if you face any technical issues immediately. Uh, please also know that these questions are visible to everyone, so you have the chance to reflect on previous comments as well. And following the presentation, there will be a moderated Q&A session. I will read your questions and Balaj will answer them directly. Uh, also, as you probably know, your names and device names are visible to everyone. If you want to change that, you may do so under the three dots next to your name. You can also minimize the participant window in order to see the slides better. Uh, and also, um, as in case of all of the previous webinars, at the end of the session, we would like to ask your quick opinion about how much did you enjoy uh, today's session. So, so make sure to stick around for a few seconds at the end. We plan to finish at around 5 p.m., but also we can uh, have questions and further discussion, but we plan to finish not later than uh, 10, 15 minutes after 5 p.m. And now I would like to briefly introduce our topic today. Um, uh, so, as you know, the title is, uh, uh, performance is about performance management. And in the times of crisis, such as the current one, leaders have increased responsibility uh, to keep their teams motivated, balanced, and high performing. Employees, uh, but also leaders face volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguousness. Um, and during the webinar, we look at ways to increase motiva motivation during these difficult times in order to keep and improve performance, which companies need now more than ever. Our presenter is Balan Shiposh, who is a successful leader with 25 years of experience in the pharma sector. In his previous roles at mar in marketing and sales, he has built up um, successful businesses and leading brands at regional and global companies. He held leadership positions at international companies such as Böhringer Ingelheim uh, and Sanofi, and he currently serves as the CEO of Boaron Hungary. He's, a, he's an economist by education, studied in Budapest and Groningen. He also holds a certificate executive coach degree, and he's an active faculty member at Seed Business School since 2017. Balázs, the word is yours. Thank you very much, Andrés. Thank you for the introduction. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy that uh, you are motivated today uh, to talk about your team's motivation and how to improve uh, uh, their, their performance. This topic is really in my heart uh, because I felt like uh, in the past few weeks and few months, it was really, really difficult for employees to, to keep their motivations. And, and we as leaders have a, a responsibility to take care of our teams and in this increasingly difficult, uh, challenging business situation to keep them together and prepare for the return. I'm not going to talk about this topic as a theoretical professor, guru on motivation, but I'm gonna share my own experience with you, my own failures and my own successes uh, so that you can avoid some traps and, and learn some, some good examples. We are actually uh, over the first phase of the epidemics. The pandemic is not over yet at all. According to WHO, it's bound to come back in the autumn. And when this virus is mixed with uh, cough and cold viruses, even the social distancing uh, may uh, uh, slow down the, the, the spreading of the virus, uh, the situation may, may bounce back and, and get uh, even more difficult than it is today. But we are now uh, solved the remote uh, work of our offices and we are preparing probably with you to come back. 
Now, uh, what are the topics we're going to cover? We're going to start from how I, our teams feel, what are the challenges they, they face, and uh, what is the leadership style that should be applied to motivate the best? Is there such a leadership style which is best, or there are some leadership styles that you should uh, uh, apply? What are the traps? What are the demotivators that you should uh, take care of uh, to, to avoid? And what are the positive motivating factors that we should apply? So this is the, the flow uh, we are going to uh, cover. Now, I don't know how many of you have kids at home, but uh, from the voices uh, a few minutes ago, I guess that some do have, but here's a solution for me for life work balance. I actually have a colleague who has six kids at home, disposed at work, uh, and it's no wonder that uh, when somebody has several jobs, the business job, the home teacher job, then the, the cleaning and household duty and, and being a husband and a wife, uh, frustrations bound to come out and uh, it may spill over to the whole team dynamics. So it's not an easy uh, job at all. How do our teams feel? What do they face? First of all, emotional and physical pressure. Of course, when we hear the news, especially back in March, we really watched it every day. Nowadays, I, I don't think many of uh, us uh, watch uh, minute after minute. Then uh, unemployment and salary cuts, a lot of fears in economic sense. Uh, people felt uh, they were not in the driving seat. They couldn't control their destiny. Social distancing missing some inspiring conversations, coffee breaks. Then if you have to make decisions, have you been able to do it in a transparent way uh, so that the team accepts the rationale and they understand why it's them, why it's me, why not you? What are the reactions in the team? Uh, then if you need some innovations, if you need some new approaches, is your team ready to now to leave the, the, the proven path to try something new? It's really critical to come back. I personally had a lot of team members who spent time worrying and frustration, and it's good to let it happen for some time, but if it's uh, happening too long, it's actually going to infect your team and it's going to uh, bring down team spirit. We've been talking about uh, this acronym VUCA for a number of years now, but actually, in my opinion, I haven't lived in a more volatile, uncertain context and a bigger situation than it is today. Just think back what happened back in March. Every day we had new regulations. We had to adapt how to cope with it day after day. We couldn't even plan uh, weeks ahead. So why the hell? would remote work uh, limit motivation? What are the reasons? Well, actually, at home, you have more freedom now. Maybe there are things you enjoy at home. But is it really uh, working better? What is the effect on motivation? What is the starting point? I'm going to show you some research now. Some research on nearly 10,000 US workers. Their motivation was measured along several, several dimensions, one of them being uh, being in the home office or, or uh, being in, in, uh, physically in the office. And it turned out that being in the, in the office, uh, working in the office was more motivating than being uh, uh, remotely working. <clears throat> but what is striking is not this one, but uh, the green columns. When you have no choice on where to work, your motivation level just drops down uh, because you are limited in your, in your freedom, in your decisions. So if you, if you have to work at home or have to work in the office, uh, your motivation is, is really uh, going down. And this is a starting point when you want to motivate uh, your teams. Now let's analyze a bit more the situation. I'm going to have a call for help from a, a classical, if not old model, which I still find true. Um, our whole world, world was shaken. Just think back. Uh, in March, what happened? Everybody was queuing up in the stores to stockpile food, toilet paper, to buy medicine, uh, not even in Hungary, not only in Hungary, but all over Europe and, 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 and the world. 
people were afraid for their physiological needs and existence. In Hungary, about 20% of people uh, employed uh, workforce got some salary cuts or got unemployed. In the US, 36 million people got unemployed, just 20 million in April. These are uh, some mind boggling numbers. So uh, real safety needs uh, were undermined. Then on the next level, we suffered on love and belongingness needs because of social distancing and quarantine measures. Our social life was limited and human beings are not uh, carved out to be alone, generally speaking. We tried some replacement. I celebrated two of my uh, children's uh, birthdays on messenger video calls. It's just replacement. I hope we are going to have a real one soon. Uh, we had Skype parties with friends. It's just not the same. We really miss something. On top of this, we, was, we weren't visible enough. Uh, we had limited opportunities to satisfy our esteem needs, our recognition. Uh, we were uh, limited in our freedom. So we were far, far away from the top self-actualization. And our role as leaders is to help our teams to overcome this, to provide them security as much as you can, decrease uncertainty by, by communicating with them, uh, frankly, uh, providing them with a team feeling that they still belong to somewhere, uh, showing them the perspective, the vision, and, and recognizing their efforts, especially as you do not see them and they do not see you. Satisfying these human needs, which we talked about, and motivating our teams required a good choice of leadership style. Uh, let, let's talk about leadership styles for a few sec moments. These are six leadership styles uh, that I, I put on this uh, uh, chart. Commanding, what does it mean? In certain situations, you need to decide, make decisions, do what I tell you, visionary. Show the perspective, show the, show the vision. When change requires new vision, uh, show a new strategic directive. Affiliative, the he to heal team wounds, to, to take care of people. You need to uh, do this sometimes. Democratic, we need to involve people in, in uh, discussions, new ideas, ask the question, what do you think? And when you have a, a competent team and you need to increase performance, uh, set the pace, then it's a different leadership style. And developing them, mentoring them, coaching, helping them change the mindset is another one. Now, I'm interested in your opinion. Which one do you think is the best leadership style in the current COVID-19 situation to boost people's motivation? We are going to have a small survey now Here's a survey. So please uh, choose your choice. You can either choose one of them or none of it or all of it. So this is your choice. Please uh, uh, vote now. Okay, I will end the polling now. Thank you very much for your answers. Uh, it seems like uh, affiliative style and visionary style uh, were, were the winner ones, uh, but there are also many who believe in coaching and I cannot see the, the graph here, but uh, quite many of you uh, feel that all of these above are important. Thank you for your answers. I agree with you in the sense that uh, I think all of these are important in different stages of the crisis. There are moments when you need to be commanding. Uh, when the crisis began and you had to set up uh, new rules, when you had to send people on vacation, it was your decision. You need to make decisions. You couldn't uh, involve everyone in this. Uh, when you need to make salary cuts, you need to do it yourself. 
but you also need to show the vision. Uh, I, I, I do show the vision to my, my people, to explain them where we are going because it's so easy to forget about it. Take care about people. I think this is the one which got the most votes and I think it's really very critical today and we are going to talk about it soon. Democratic one, involving them in decisions, it helps them to feel a sense of control, which is so important for them, and pace setting and, and coaching too. So my answer to this question is that you need to be aware what the situation is and which style you need, and be very uh, co uh, conscious about uh, which one you choose. So, leaders, should be uh, familiar with not only uh, motivational factors, but also uh, what demotivates the team. What are the demotivational factors uh, that, that can, uh, you can expect? What do you think are the most frequent in your teams? Just uh, think for a few moments, and then I'm interested in your opinion again. Think about your team and try to decide for yourself what are the factors that bring down motivation level below zero. And uh, I'm going, we are going to use the messaging tool for this. I cannot see you, but I'm still counting on your uh, active involvement. So uh, the chat box is uh, on the bottom, as Andras has mentioned. Please give me a few tips, uh, quick brainstorming, just a few words, each of you. What is demotivating your teams? Please tell me. Here we have some already. Uh huh. Salary cuts, uncertainty, time management, fear, uncertainty, lack of interactions, micromanagement, no clear communication, salary cuts again, mm -hmm. no understanding behind decisions. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I think it's a, it's a good picture. Uh-huh, the boss doesn't see you. So lot, lots of things about communication, about decisions and uncertainty. These were the key words in my opinion. Thank you for your uh, involvement in this. Uh, let, let me show you my list, which is partly overlapping uh, your list. Let me uh, talk about first emotional pressure. The weight of the news uh, that, that was coming was just overwhelming. When we saw the pictures about Italy patients on the uh, hospital corridors, it was really, really upsetting. Uh, economic pressure, people were afraid of losing jobs. I think many of you mentioned uh, um, in this little brainstorming or feedback that uh, people are afraid of salary cuts or losing their jobs. Uh, then inertia, an interesting one. When people do not feel like being in a driver's seat, they do not feel that their actions have a connection uh, to the situation, they do not control their destinies, they give up even trying. They just float with the water, they don't, don't swim uh, on it. And there are two traps uh, regarding control, either too little or too much. If you have too little control, uh, then people do not have any, any kind of uh, routine, uh, any kind of boundaries and, and framework. And, and I think teams need some kind of framework. And you as, as uh, uh, remote workers at home, when I get up, I do my exercises, I properly dress up, shave, and then go to my, my home office. I don't uh, stay uh, in, in bed with the laptop. Um, I think it's important to separate a bit uh, uh, your, your working time from your, home, from your uh, um, uh, work time. And some kind of routine and uh, framework is needed for your team as well. But on the other hand, too many rules just destroy motivation. People will uh, stay away from problem solving and creative thinking and just do the bare minimum. Another fine balance to strike is between operational work and strategy. You need to have the parallel ability 
of doing the current pressing, uh, answering the current pressing business issues, and at the same time, think about new models, new innovation, creative ideas, and the strategy. Next topic is uh, uh, trust. If you have a tendency to uh, control too much things, uh, your team will feel that you do not trust them. Many, many leaders wouldn't have allowed home office before this crisis, but now they had to. Now it's natural. But if your team feels like uh, they, they, you, you don't trust that they are doing their best at home, uh, it will also ruin their motivation level. And what's so easy to forget, even in normal times, and I also forget about it often, I'm honest with you, is reinforcing uh, behavior uh, uh, recognition and positive uh, feedback. Uh, regarding uh, the topic of uh, operational versus strategy, let me give you an example from my own uh, business. Right now, we have not only the COVID uh, situation, but also uh, we are undergoing a complete portfolio change because of regulatory reasons. Our current portfolio can only be sold until the end of June, one more month to go. We're introducing new products. It's very, very critical. And, but it's all uh, happening now. It's tactical now. So we have to think of the future. We are talking about business development. We are talking about transforming the, comp the company to a natural-based company uh, with a different portfolio, decreasing the risk uh, and introducing uh, new lines uh, in, in the near and, and distant future as well. So we keep an eye both on solving the current issues and handling uh, the future. The interesting uh, uh, question is whether to focus on business or people. And this is a trap which I fell into. Because I think all of us had intense business pressure uh, and uh, it was so easy to forget about uh, uh, people. Uh, let, let me have another poll with you. Uh, the question in the poll is going to be whether you spent a higher share of your time on business issues in the COVID situations, let's say since March, or a high percent of your time on people management issues, or is just the same for you? The numbers are changing very quickly. All right. I think uh, we can stop this. I think the, the picture is that uh, approximately two thirds of the participants spent more time with people management, uh, one quarter uh, more time with business issues and uh, for the rest it, it's just the same. For me, it was in the beginning, I spent more time with business issues because it was so critical, but then I realized that it's not going to work out so well. And I realized that I need to, to change this. Uh, let me just highlight uh, uh, in our case, uh, what this, this meant. In March, uh, when the uh, purchase boom came, we had serious growth in terms of brand I'm showing you now the sellout, the former sellout of a cuff syrup, a real one in a portfolio. And I'm showing you 2020 figures versus 2019 figures. So the red one is uh, this year, blue one is last year. By week 20, we sold two and a half times of what we sold the year before. But until week 19, it decreased to nearly zero. Because of the quarantine measures, uh, uh, it's really unbelievable. We didn't expect this. It's really critical. And we had different challenges. For example, in the first period, the distribution bottleneck situation. We just couldn't serve the customers. The, the wholesalers were not prepared this. I think you remember from the grocery stores, some empty shelves, and it was the same in pharmacies. And now we have overstocking. The whole channel is, is uh, blocked because there is just no demand. There are no people in the pharmacies. And it's, it's, it's picking up much slower than, than, than we thought and than the industry thought 
it was going to pick up. The release measures have a much more gradual effect. Uh, it's just not uh, motivating to go out uh, to the shops uh, with, uh, wearing the masks uh, so much. So my temptation was to focus on these immediate business challenges to, uh, instead of focusing on the people, but then I realized that uh, it's not going to work out and I have to fo focus on the people. And this leads me to the next topic, which is how and why to take care of people. You as leaders should be fam familiar with the personal circumstances of your teams the home situation of every employee and have flexibility in taking care of them. For example, someone in my team who is over 60 now and uh, who's afraid of going to the warehouse where her physical presence is needed, uh, I didn't force her to do that. I could have done that uh, legally as an employer, but we uh, hired a substitute to do the physical work and presence and uh, this employee just have the substitute uh, remotely. Uh, I do believe that uh, uh, without people, uh, we, we are nothing as leaders and uh, uh, people need, need the culture and the culture eats that strategy for breakfast as we all know it. And if you want to come back to the business, if you lose your people, either physically because you release them or you lose their soul, you lose the connection to them, it's going to be even more challenging. And how to do it? My first tip is to take care of yourself. Um, because if your team feels that you are unbalanced, you're insecure, uh, you're mentally or physically not uh, sound, then you cannot motivate your team. I'm being frank with you again. I haven't been motivated all the time these three months now. I had my ups and downs. I sometimes felt like, you know, uh, it's so overwhelming. Uh, but then I, I thought about what are my successes? What are the good conversations that I have in the team? Uh, and I really take care of uh, having enough exercise and so on. Uh, just like in, in, the, in the war, the commando uh, lead has to take care of himself first so that he can take care of the team and then the mission. Or when you are flying and the cabin pressure drops, the mask appears, the instructions are to put it on your face first before putting it on your child next seat. So this is my first advice. Uh, my next advice is demonstrate that you really care for your people. And it's not only showing care, maybe it's misleading, but your, your real caring of the people is so important. So be interested in how they are, how their families are, how they're coping with this situation. Now, as you are preparing to come back to the office, how do they feel about it? How can you involve in the, uh, them in this? Then continue developing them. <clears throat> it's a good development uh, uh, process, I think, from all of us now, you as leaders and your employees too. But just continue with the things you did before. So giving feedback. Uh, I, I hold in-house trainings now for some of my managers I do mentoring and coaching sessions with them and try some, some new tasks. For example, one of the, some, some of the office uh, colleagues now did telesales, for example, uh, helping the, the field force. And the, the missing uh, piece in this puzzle is trust. In this VUCA world, it's so important to trust that you are going to solve it, you're going to come out of it together with your team and for your team to feel that you trust them. Last year, we had extremely serious regulatory issues at the company. The company's existence was at risk. And I think I earned my team's trust uh, at that time uh, when I shared with them the dangers that we face, when I shared with them from time to time openly what scenarios we have, what are the consequences. I didn't uh, mask it uh, from them. And, and I think it's a key that they trust me that I'm going to uh, uh, help them, help the company uh, come out of, of this crisis now. So now that we know what the demotivators are and, and how to focus on people, let's discover 
some positive motivators. What are the key motivators in the COVID-19 situation? If you are seed alumni, you are familiar with Daniel Pink's model, so I'm not going to uh, detail it. Uh, if you're interested, you can watch the video when you get the presentation uh, on the link below. But I'm just going to highlight two things uh, from autonomy, mastery, and purpose. The first one is regarding autonomy. There's a high tendency for leaders uh, prone to uh, over control feeling things to do micromanagement because they do not see what's going on. They want to be involved in the details. If you have a, a tendency for this, have your awareness uh, to avoid it. But the most important thing in this situation, I think, is the third one, purpose. It's so easy to get lost for your teams in the daily grind, staying at home uh, and forgetting about what this whole purpose is, what, what, what it's what, what it, it for. So do talk about your vision for them, communicate about this. I think it's very, very motivational now uh, for them to look out uh, uh, to, to the future. And I'd like to complete this model with the fourth pillar, which is play, innovation, and experimentation. It really boosts performance. The joy of solving problems with a colleague, the ease of making a good decisions, it's just enjoyable, trying new things. Uh, talking about innovation, in the farm industry, I don't know whether you have uh, heard how much it costs to develop research and develop a new innovative molecule to the market. It costs approximately $2 billion, $2 billion. And the chances for succeeding to get into the market are just 40% even after 10 years of development and already in so-called phase three clinical trials when thousands of patients are already volunteering to try the product. All the investment uh, up to that point can be lost, but innovation means that the successful stories, successful brands or ideas bear the cost of all, all the, the things which uh, do not uh, succeed. In my closer turf, uh, self-medication, OTC, industry, the chance of a successful launch, new product launch in the market is just about 20%. The rest of the 80% are just so-so or forget it. So you really need to have some um, kind of uh, tolerance for, for mistakes. Now, uh, would you be interested in some uh, practical uh, creative solutions uh, which uh, we applied regarding communication uh, since uh, the COVID started? I'm going to share with you some ideas. Maybe you can implement some of them if you uh, haven't so far. For example, we introduced a WhatsApp communication, WhatsApp group uh, globally uh, among the countries, and this helped tremendously, uh, especially at the beginning, to exchange ideas because new situations require new ideas, and uh, we could uh, uh, share it much more uh, flexibly than in any other way. Switching to telesales, the sales teams who uh, visited healthcare professionals face-to-face -face had to spend their whole day uh, as, as telesales, uh, but it went much easier than, than we would have thought. Uh, we have regular uh, general management conferences, international conferences, where we share best practice, and depending on the topic, we invite some manager members uh, and who become then ambassadors to share this information back to the team. Uh, I just had a, this conference before I joined uh, uh, this call. Virtual marketing and sales uh, meetings, even role plays. It's possible to have role plays in, in Skype. I think a few uh, uh, months ago, it would have seemed impossible like so many other uh, new um, in, in inventions. Social media, we try a lot of things in social media, and I must admit that it's not all a uh, huge success, but at least uh, we tried. We also have education webinars, and it's, it's 
showing good interest, several hundreds of uh, participants uh, in, in the webinars. Uh, and uh, an example of how to turn something negative into positive. Uh, there was going to be a scientific congress in Miami at the end of June. Most congresses were, in, in generally speaking, uh, postponed or canceled. This one was not postponed or canceled. It's going to be held virtually. And because of this, the participation fee dropped to just $120. So this means that a lot more participants can uh, can go and and uh, and uh, share and get uh, the news uh, when they don't have to pay the, the travel and the accommodation costs. So these are just a few ideas which I wanted to share with you. And actually, uh, new ideas uh, mean that we are on the constantly on the learning curve, which means, guys, that it's okay to make mistakes with new approaches or using new technology just like uh, the guy uh, in, in the video now. Guys, I hope you liked it. Uh, anyway, if you have uh, uh, the new dress code uh, like this at home, just be prepared for some situations like this. Anyway, uh, uh, we wouldn't have had such uh, good stories uh, uh, being in the office. So sometimes at least uh, we can have some fun too. Now let's talk about uh, a more serious topic, how to recognize your true talents. And the crisis will be your best friend now to help you with this. Because in the crisis, our real uh, strong and development points will come out. Uh, and your real times will be the ones who show not only performance, but also are agile in, in this increasingly difficult situation, who are able to change and be innovative in today. And good leaders do not spread their resources evenly, they focus on the most important segments in their development efforts. It's a trap uh, to just uh, focus on, on development and not on the, on, the, on the good ones. Involve your key people in decision-making, build on their knowledge, experience, skills, and commitment. And with this, you can avoid some bad decisions. Talking about communication, communicating effectively is uh, a challenge now. Your teams do not have uh, the, the, the same ways of communication as before. Right now, I cannot see you. I can see just the screen and the camera. I cannot see your eyes. I cannot see your gestures. I cannot see your body language. Even when you communicate face-to-face -face with someone, the message which uh, you say is only a fraction of this stays in the audience. Uh, and when you communicate with your team, just make sure that they understand what uh, uh, the communication is about, ask for feedback. The other point is communicating authentically and we are going to talk about it uh, soon. And let me share some uh, tips about uh, working with the team. I'm sure many of you do this. At the beginning of each meeting, I think it's really good to uh, start uh, with talking about the team. So how do you feel? how their family is, how their health is, how they are coping. They really appreciate it. It strengthens the relationship uh, between you and uh, things will run much more smoothly. Even if you have pressing business challenges, uh, you spend some time with them. Uh, some colleague uh, uses uh, daily slots every morning at nine o'clock 
to have regular calls with the team just to ask how they are. And of course, if there are some business priorities, they discuss these as well, but otherwise they uh, just have some quite time together. And the last point is leadership values. It's always uh, critical, it's essential, but now in the crisis, without your leadership values shown and lived, uh, you can run into some huge uh, disturbance. It should be your lighthouse, like for the ship on the horizon. We are in uncertain uh, situations now. We really don't know uh, when, how, when and how the demand is going to pick up, what's going to happen in the autumn. And we have to make decisions and these values can help you with this. Mine uh, values are, for example, winning spirit, teamwork and integrity. And I do try to leave them and make decisions uh, taking these uh, into uh, consideration. Now, uh, we talked about uh, uh, communicating. Let's see uh, how it should be done. So what do we know now? We know about the business issues. We know what are the demotivating factors. We even know some positive uh, motivation. We have identified your key talents. So the next question is how to communicate with the team so that you don't ruin what you've done so far. Be clear about what you know and what you don't know. In the example which I told before about the regulatory situation, uh, I always explained wh where we are and even if I didn't know what was going to happen, I told them what steps we are taking at least. But hiding bad news, I think it's a reflex in lots of organizations, but, and this is one of the worst things you can do in a crisis because maybe avoid some uh, a bad mood uh, in the short run, but you ruin your reputation in, in terms of uh, stakeholder, external internal stakeholders uh, management. Let me share with you a shocking example. I don't know whether you are familiar with the Contergan scandal. This is real. In the 1950s, uh, this medicine, this medicine that was marketing uh, uh, marketed for morning sickness of pregnant women. And unfortunately, it had some unseen side effects and several thousands of babies were born with serious deformity from the 1960s. And the, at the beginning, of the producer of this drug, unfortunately tried to cover this up and provided false information in order to keep the product in sales as long as possible. And as a consequence of this, there are many, many thousands of sufferers even today. And it, it seriously hit, uh, of course, the company, which is still suffering uh, uh, from reputational hit now. But the most important thing is the patients uh, who are suffering. And actually this triggered industry-wide uh, new approach in terms of pharmacovigilance and very, very strict testing in uh, developing uh, medicines. What has uh, to mention? Why is the crisis, the COVID crisis good for you? How you can use it? I told you that we show our true selves and not only the talents. So use this as a test. Look for reactions, initiatives, find the weak link. And when you do have to make cost uh, savings, in terms of uh, team even. A lot of companies actually do it in an even way. So they, let's say, cut the salaries of, by 40% for everyone. But isn't it better to make a list of uh, your best performers and worst performers and maybe cut permanently the, the bottom 10% or 5% and gain some organizational uh, efficiency? Con just consider this. To recap, this is the essence, uh, what I think is, is really, really very important to keep your teams going. This is the pinnacle, showing the purpose, being creative, allowing them to experiment uh, within boundaries, of course, giving them autonomy for this. Build this on your people's uh, leadership, taking care of the team, 
taking care of them as people, persons, not only as, as workforce. And don't forget that uh, they need some positive reinforcement. And this is all built on the basis uh, of the pyramid, which is uh, your values, the trust toward the solution and your team, and uh, how you communicate it. Guys, I think uh, it's not going to, uh, the world is not going to be the same again. Uh, what's happening is going to leave a mark on us, on our teams. And the crisis can either bring people together and facilitate a collective spirit or push teams apart, tear teams apart, and individuals will distrust one another instead of helping them. Which one will happen? Is basically in your hands. Now, uh, at the end of uh, the session, uh, I can already see what's going to happen because now you know what kind of traps to avoid. Uh, now you know what kind of practices uh, you can try, you can try to implement. So let's look at your teams, how they are going to cope with every situation uh, that uh, is possible. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found some uh, good tips uh, and advice. And now I'm open for your questions. Yes, uh, thank you, Balaj, uh, for your insights. We do uh, already have a question, actually, from the from the beginning, from uh, uh, Roberto. Actually, mm -hmm. Roberto asked: Is there any differences in motivation from working from home among generations? Do you see any difference among how to motivate different generations? Uh, I, I think there is. Uh, for, uh, for example, on the technical aspect, uh, of course, the uh, elderly generation or middle age generation uh, has much more need for support in terms of technical capabilities than, than, the, than the younger ones. Uh, I have uh, to spend, I mean, uh, support my, my elderly or uh, middle-aged uh, team members much more, uh, and they need much more time to adapt. They need more flexibility. For the younger ones, I think it's, uh, it's easy. They use uh, all, all these uh, tools effic as efficient as if uh, they, they were born with this. Uh, of course, uh, uh, motivation uh, is very individual, and it can have some generational uh, aspect as well. Uh, we know very well that uh, 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 Y and Z generations need a different kind of uh, uh, things that, that uh, keep them motivated than, than somebody who is uh, in their 50s or, or 60s. They need different kind of uh, autonomy. Uh, they have different uh, kind of uh, loyalty and thinking as well. And they are different in terms of innovation as well. So when you want new ideas, uh, probably uh, the younger generations uh, will uh, be uh, more open for new ways to try, uh, uh, will, will be uh, more your 
your resources uh, for uh, thinking about uh, new business models, there will be less resistance uh, for leaving the, 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 the proven path. Uh, so I think uh, you have to treat everybody differently according to the, the needs. But this is generalization. So it doesn't mean that uh, a younger person uh, is always innovative or an elder person uh, cannot be innovative uh, or vice versa. Okay, um, I also received some uh, questions uh, uh, privately. Uh, here's one of them um, from Gabor, I see. Some of my colleagues are afraid to go back to the office now. What should I do to keep them motivated? Mm -hmm. Psychological effect. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very valid question and many, many of us are facing with this situation now. Uh, I think it's important to make it gradually. So don't expect that people will uh, uh, get used to the uh, office work uh, uh, very soon because they have some habits now at home and there will be some fears of being in the community again, uh, social distancing and so on. So I do suggest, first of all, to make steps. Two days on the office, uh, three days remote work and weekend, uh, and then increase uh, the office, uh, step number one. Step number two, uh, why don't you involve them in, in making, for example, the housekeeping rules? What I did, I, I uh, had a volunteer who coordinated within, within the team what kind of housekeeping rules uh, they wanted to set up uh, to, to keep healthy, to keep social distancing in the office. And then, of course, I checked it. Uh, um, they also got some legal advice. Of course, we as employers have some obligations here. But since they were involved, uh, they, were, they felt like more in control. And I think it was important in helping them uh, uh, accepting it. Uh, then explaining um, uh, that this is the norm now, that uh, explaining that other companies uh, are are, and the countries are, are doing the same. So it's just normal and explaining that uh, what advantages it has for them that they can catch up uh, a much easier information uh, exchange will be uh, much, much easier. Explaining the advantages and involving them and making it a step by step, I think uh, it's going to happen. At least that's how I'm doing it now. Okay, um, Zoltan. Zoltan is asking a very good question. Because what you were talking about is basically motivating your management team, so the people directly under you. Um, but how do you make sure that this goes further and they will be able to pass on motivation to their people, so two levels down? So how can you ensure that this sort of motivation flow goes through the organizational structure? Uh, I think uh, it's important to have all team events as well when you can when you can directly communicate with everybody uh, even with your uh, uh, subordinates subordinates uh, so that you are you are in this together the communication doesn't really have to be so linear uh, i think it's best if you have uh, more informal channels and informal uh, opportunities to to discuss so you you as a as a as a top leader uh, have to share your vision, not only to your direct report, but also to everybody in the team. Uh, so what, what I talk, talked about is not really only for direct reports, but it's for everybody. From time to time, it's important for you uh, to get in contact with, with, with uh, not only your direct, direct reports. And uh, by having uh, discussions with your uh, direct reports, having um, coaching, mentoring meetings, giving feedback, discussing with them how their teams are doing. Maybe you can help them uh, managing uh, their teams as well. And uh, asking for feedback, asking for feedback uh, from the team members, from the reports reports, is going to help you uh, uh, getting a clear picture. Uh, and uh, uh, I think sharing all your leadership uh, abilities, uh, approaches with your managers, so that they can implement it further uh, is also a key. 
Okay, uh, you mentioned some good uh, examples from your company uh, about what kind of uh, uh, forums do you use in WhatsApp and, and uh, you know, these uh, webinars and so on. Uh, Attila is asking about, is asking if you have any remote team building technique that you use that you might want to share with us uh, today. So a specific technique that you use for a team building via these channels. Um, we, we haven't uh, done it yet, uh, but uh, I think it, it would be uh, absolutely possible. Uh, what, what, what I've done uh, is that uh, I involved uh, at this marketing and sales meeting uh, an external speaker who is actually a psychologist and uh, who uh, helped us uh, um, to talking about uh, uh, what fears we could have, uh, what, what situations we, we were in uh, with some cognitive techniques explaining uh, what was going on uh, in, in the whole team. Um, I think uh, the, the technical solutions allow any kind of uh, team building uh, uh, which, uh, which you can think of. So, uh, but I, I heard that uh, some other companies have uh, virtual coffee breaks. Um, we, we are actually considering having some uh, dinners together. We haven't done it yet, but mm -hmm. it's on the agenda. So we, we want to have a, a virtual dinner. It's absolutely a free choice whether to join or not. And then we have a, we have a team dinner and we just uh, have a drink together and, and uh, eat together virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not possible physically. I think uh, everything, uh, nearly everything that you could do uh, physically would be possible now. I, I don't see uh, why not. Only the uh, limit is, uh, is the fantasy. I absolutely think it's possible. Okay, uh, we have actually two good questions, one from Levent and one from, one from Mate. Uh, I start with Mate. Um, uh, can you imagine that people are more effective in home office? Uh, do you have any experiences on that? And the, the uh, Levent, question from Levent uh, sticks to exactly that. You mentioned that your uh, sales team is now switched to, to telesales mode. Now, what if sales, go, sales actually go up? So it reflects to what Mate is asking. They're more effective from home. Uh, so how can you uh, cope with that? Uh, I think there are things uh, when, we can, when we can be more effective at home. Uh, we have uh, less travel time, uh, less time for meeting with partners, which saves time for uh, some other things to do. Um, we can, there are people who can be very disciplined at home, having their routines and can concentrate on the task, uh, who, who can uh, even cope with, uh, with, uh, with the children and uh, the business together and maybe uh, have some deeper thing, uh, 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 some, some tasks which need deeper thinking later in the evening or during the night. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, for the majority, I think it's, it's, it's less effective because communication is uh, very seriously uh, 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 limited. Uh, regarding the, the sales topic, it, uh, there can be many things that are more effective now. For example, in telesales, we can have more frequency. Uh, the reps could have, uh, for example, in the past, let's say 10 physical visits, now they, they can have 20 uh, tele visits. Uh, they can, uh, whereas in the past, uh, they could have a limited number of uh, participants in physical education. Now we can have a lot more participants in, in webinars and, and virtual education because people don't need to travel to a different place. They can just uh, plug in in the evening for an hour or so. So there can be things which I think we will preserve uh, after coming back to. I, I, I plan to have a mixed model. Coming back will be step by step, and we, I plan to have a mixed model for the office as well, and, and the field force as well. So we are going to combine most probably physical, physical presence with home office, more flexibility than before. I think we can always see that it works. Uh, and uh, for the field force, they're going to combine 
all these physical and, and uh, digital tools uh, because we can increase the uh, frequency and, and, uh, and touch points. Uh, so I think this test period, if you can uh, say this, uh, was uh, really essential and uh, we overcame a lot of obstacles which uh, otherwise we would have taken months or years to overcome. Okay, actually what you're saying now nicely taps into Sandy's question, uh, who is asking, what if, you know, there is, you know, people will have too much of a good thing and it's, you know, they will be reluctant to sort of return to their uh, normal uh, uh, setting. Um, how could you motivate them to get back to this new normal? Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's very valid. Uh, uh, e even for me, of course, uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, easier to be at home because I can be more flexible with, with my time. Uh, but I, I, of course, take uh, into consideration the company's uh, interest. For the people, uh, I think you need a different approach now. You need, need to make it motivating for them. You need to have more flexibility uh, in the office. Um, for example, we are going to start uh, next Tuesday, after the day of on Monday, uh, with a um, morning session on the terrace of the, the office building where we are. On the top floor, there is an open air terrace. And our morning office meeting will be held on the terrace. We, we need some more flexible tools uh, to have this kind of uh, gradual uh, uh, shift to back to the office. But, and when they see that it works and when they see that uh, they can still have some home office. I think uh, uh, it's good. But I also, I'm also on, in the opinion that uh, most people want to go back to, to the office now. Being at home for the average, for, for the majority, is now more than enough. Uh, this double job or triple job, which I, I, I described, taking care of the kids, uh, home office, uh, you know, you cannot concentrate uh, uh, because uh, somebody's shouting in the, in the background all the time. Um, and uh, people need some more interactions, human interactions. We as human beings need this. I'm not so much afraid uh, that uh, we would have a uh, uh, lot of uh, obstacles in this, but we need some flexibility. Uh, for example, for, for my, my team, most of us will be in the office, let's say Monday, Tuesday, but there's somebody, a middle-aged uh, person who said that she's afraid of uh, uh, coming to the uh, team yet because of health reasons, risks, and she wants to be in Wednesday and, th and Thursday, Thursday. I told her, okay, come on Thursday and, 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 and Wednesday. But when she asked me, uh, can she take off July, uh, June still, and stay in the home office? I said, unfortunately, I cannot make an exception here because then everybody would ask for exception if I make an exception with you. So I cannot grant this, but she understood it. Uh, this is uh, my answer. So uh, being flexible, flexible uh, try some new ways, but then be firm and show that this is a new norm and uh, it's just going to happen. Other companies are doing it too, and it's going to be good, good for them. Show the advantages. Okay, thank you very much. And um, if you have any questions uh, following this webinar, uh, you may still ask them. Uh, you will receive an email soon after this session with all the details. You can send your questions to us directly, um, and Balaj uh, will answer them directly via email. Balaj, can you move to the next slide, please? Sure. Because now I would like to uh, set, uh, launch the poll of how did you feel today? Uh, again, uh, between uh, seven, one to seven, please uh, select the number that best describes your feelings. OK. 
Okay. Please vote now. Some people who haven't voted yet. Okay. Still some arrived. Okay, I'm closing it now. Thank you very much. And um, as I mentioned, uh, we are happy to welcome you next week at four on Thursday. Uh, we will have uh, Esther Avar, uh, who is our one of our coaches, and um, uh, she will uh, talk about uh, actually a similar uh, uh, topic um, um, uh, about uh, um, motivation and uh, performance management as well. Bal Balash, can you take off the the Yes, thank you very much. So stress and energy management for leaders during the, the crisis, that's, that will be her topic. And we'll see you next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, thank you very much uh, and bye-bye. Have a great weekend. Thank you guys. It's a pleasure to meet you virtually. Have a great weekend and good luck. Bye-bye. Bye now.